and welcome to this Point Blank Masterclass. My name is Sarah Glazer and joining me today is German-born producer and DJ Maya Schenk, who will be deconstructing her track Waiting for Tony. Maya has released on a number of labels including CR2 Records, Habitual Recordings and Nervous Records and in May 2016 launched her own label Henry Recordings to critical acclaim. Remember, you can find out more about our courses in London, Los Angeles and online by visiting our website pointblankmusicschool.com. Maya, thanks very much for coming in. Welcome to Point Blank Broadcast Room. Um, so how long have you been making music and how did you get into production in the first place? I've been working in music for 14 years, right, but it okay. became a professional five years ago, I would say, more or less professional. Then I started, I did basically top lines for house music producers. Ah. And um, then I found, I found it really exciting, the whole process, mm -hmm. and I decided to sit in with the other producers instead of getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this Makes is how I sense. learned, basically, by just sitting in with other producers, asking a lot of questions, um, a lot of YouTube videos. Ah, yeah. the tutorials. Yeah, a lot yeah, of tutorials, really mm -hmm. um, a lot of books as well, <laughs> Great. Um, reading computer music. So I'm really like, uh, this is why I was excited about hearing about degree courses, because I didn't know at the time it didn't exist that way. So yeah. I just learned everything, you know, finding where I could find the information. Right, so more self-taught. Yeah, you well, said. I am self-taught, but mm -hmm. of course, um, th the most valuable tips and tricks I've got actually from other people, other producers I worked with or worked for, uh, or I respect, and I just asked. Yeah. So how did you do that? Yeah. Could you show me exactly how you did that? And then um, if it's a good producer, or like, I don't know, I find it's a good thing if you actually share the knowledge you've got. Yeah. Because somebody else will never, ever be able to do exactly what you're doing anyways. You know, you don't need to be afraid of that. Um, but if you share it, they can do it in their own creativity, with their own ideas. And, you know, use these things. And this is what I hope to show you today. Okay, One great. or two things. So who, who did you go to who's given you some really good tips? Um, well, Alex Blanco, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, Cicada, Ron from Cicada, Ron Costa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the main two people, actually. Okay. And then a lot of YouTube. Great. <laughs> so how easy was it to um, approach these people? Did you contact them on Twitter or SoundCloud or did you meet them at events and, and gigs? One of them I met, so the first one, which was my way in, I met actually at an event in Metropolis Studios at mm -hmm. the time, which was an attended mastering session and a recording session as well, two different things. And I just met him because he was actually the producer of this album. And um, yeah, we started talking, we got on well and then, yeah. Then I went to the studios with him mm -hmm. and in the studio complex, then I met more people and this is just went like one thing, you know, for the other. So what would you say has been your career highlight so far? So my career highlight, I think, is that I opened my own uh, label mm. this year yeah. called Henry. And um, I mean, I've released on a lot of different labels. So the f all the, f the years now, I just release on labels and big labels like Nervous Records and CR2 yeah. Records. And this is all very nice and important as well to do that, or to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, but then you get these tracks which you create and they don't maybe fit, p fit in a certain pigeonhole, mm -hmm. but they do represent a vision you've mm. got. And um, so with opening Henry, which is my, my new label, my little tiny little baby label, <laughs> um, I got this possibility to release these tracks. And so for Henry, I'm using so many organic sounds. This is the big new thing in my life ah, this year is okay. that I'm using a lot, a lot of real sounds, sounds um, found sounds, sounds yeah. I've recorded mm -hmm. as well. Natural sounds like in the woods, for example. Um, yeah, and I find this really beautiful. And I think this gives as well, the production, a certain kind of, you know, organic dynam dynamism. Excellent. Yeah. And you're on your label, you're um, opening that up to other artists as yeah. well, aren't you? It's not just your tracks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the first release of another artist um, will be next year in March. And the only thing is that all the artists need to use a lot of organic sounds on it. Ah, okay. So we are so clearly in the it. techno field. It's clearly yeah. like house and techno. Yeah. But it has to have like this kind of organic feel to it. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, let's have a, a listen to some of Waiting for Tony.
Great. So, um, thinking about a creative workflow, what's the first thing you do when you start a track, when you've got a fresh idea in your head? Um, depends on what kind of idea it is. So if it is sample based, if it is something I have heard in a track I really like, mm -hmm. if it is like a vocal hook or if it is just like a guitar or something, yeah. then I would start by um, cleaning up the sample, yeah. basically. Um, if it is a riff, if it's more like coming from a musical point of view, if it's more a riff, or a synth patch maybe I really like, yeah. then I'm going to start by finding individual drum sounds, um, then resequencing them into a, a drum um, pattern I like. Yeah. And then I'm going to put straight the riff down. Mm -hmm. So this is already locked. And if this is working, then all the rest can work around it. And for this track, you've created this really nice driving rhythm by layering uh, African drums over techno style beats. Mm. Um, is this the first time you've used this kind of approach? And, and what inspired you to, to go for that? So the inspiration was clearly the, the sample in this one. So this is why I was saying earlier, with the, is it sample, sample based, the inspiration, or is it actually a riff you have in your head? Mm. Um, because this one is sample based. I heard this track and I really liked the vocal in it and I liked as well the percussive bits in some parts. Yeah. So basically, yeah, this was the first time that um, I used an African percussion on it. Yeah. And um, so I dropped the sample just into a sampler, mm -hmm. normal. Then I isolated the different slices. I chose the slices I liked of it. So basically I just used the slices. Can you hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used the slices I like. And then I resequence them just in the pattern, which is to my liking. Yeah. Like this one. So for example. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is like the well, I call it here Afrobeat, so we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, this is the African percussion bit in, yeah. in the track. And then of course I use like extra kick and extra snares and everything. Yeah. So uh, normally I take uh, well I recycle a lot. Of, I use a lot of um, drums I've already used in other tracks. Right. Okay. But I take a lot of kicks and snares as well from just other tracks from other artists from the past or from the present things I like. And I think a lot of people do that. Yeah. So you just drop it in the sampler. You're gonna isolate the one you know sound you like, and then you're gonna reuse it. Yeah. Great. Uh, could we hear um, the, the African beats with the other beats layered on top of it, like just by themselves, so we can yeah. isolate that? I mean, do you find that some of the rhythms in techno are, are similar to those in African drumming? Well, I suppose that African drumming is like a wide um, field. Like I think that almost all rhythms there are will be kind of encompassed in African drum. Will stem from them, yeah. yeah. In one way or the other. But yeah, I, I mean, I think they are similar, as you say. Mm, but that really nice the sound that comes later that's sort of almost quite sort of divey and creamy. What, what is that what do you later mean? on the track? You mean the violin? Ah, is that, okay, right, uh, yeah. Wait, Can you listen, listen to that. that. Yeah. yeah oh, it's a violin. Yeah. Okay. So what, what have you done to it to, to give it that sound? It's really nice sound. Well, I sampled it. Simply. Right. So they'd already put the effects on for that before you. Well, I would have monoed it, so uh -huh. I would have taken just the left or the right signal, mm -hmm. um, and then I would have put some reverb on it. Uh -huh. Because you know, when you mono it, it as well becomes like really small the sound. Mm -hmm. So you need to give it some width back. Right. Okay. Um, so I give it some width back by simply putting some reverb on it. Micro shift. Micro shift I would have used to make it a bit bigger again. Oh, okay. Is this one of the uh, plugins that you use regularly? Is this yeah. a favorite of yours? Yeah. 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 And um, for the reverb, I would have used the UAD AMS one, which just sounds really nice. It's really delicious, fleshy sound. Mm. So it sounds actually squashed. It sounds squashed and yeah. smaller. Yeah. Although it's, it's like this, it would sit nicer in the mix and it would actually come out. Whereas, as we listened to it before, it sounds maybe isolated nicer in a way, maybe even nicer. But if you put it in the track, it would just be all messy and all over the place. Yeah. Whereas, like this, it's like tight, small, it's like a punchy ball in the middle of the mix. Yeah. Which can come out there. You've used quite a minimal but very effective bass line in this track and I just wondered what techniques you used to really bring it to life. So I spend most of my time finding the right sound 
Yeah. So because if you have the right sound, you don't need to work too much on it. Yeah. So you, I just cut away some frequencies. I just clean it EQ wise, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to put a compressor on it. Yeah. But in order for it to sound really nice, I think you need to find the right sound. So spend most of your time looking for the right sound mm -hmm. and don't compromise. Don't put a track a, a sound and you don't really like or you just like yeah. aspects of it. Yeah. You know, it's like with a partner. Don't compromise. <laughs> there are like aspects of him or her you really like. Yeah. But it's not the whole package, then don't take it, you know. Don't yeah. go with it. And if you're working with something over and over again, exactly. that sounds gonna drive you mad if it's, it's not, not the right one. And you're gonna mm. spend so much time trying to make it right and at the end yeah. it doesn't really work. Or you're always dissatisfied basically with the baseline. And as it's so important in you know, electronic dance music to have the right baseline, spend most of the time finding the right sound. What is your mixing process? Well, I do mixing as I go along. As you go along, you will always like chip away some frequencies here because mm -hmm. if you put a new element on and you see it doesn't sit, it doesn't work, then you need to chip some away. Mm -hmm. um, but I always get my stuff mixed down by an engineer, right, somebody okay. I work with always. Um, I find it's an important thing. It's its own job. So, yeah, yeah, you know, maybe in 10 years time, I'm going to be a brilliant mix engineer. At the moment, I'm I don't think I am. And I'm happy to sit in with somebody who has more distance to the track. Yeah. So he or she, in my case, it's a he um, is, well, he's like a really, really good mixing engineer. He's been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. You know, this is his job and he can see what um, what thing does which track need. Mm -hmm. And I can always sit in with him. Yeah. So if something happens which isn't to my liking, you know, it will always be close to exactly what I want. Yeah. So this is my tip. You know, if you're not, if you're not really brilliant at it, mm -hmm. go to somebody else. Yeah. And Makes every sense. time you pay for it, every time you sit there, you're gonna learn, and yeah. you're gonna, you know, maybe in ten years' time, fifteen years' time, you're gonna be doing this all by yourself. Traditionally, you've made house music, mm -hmm. but it seems that you're moving more towards techno mm -hmm. now. Um, is that through um, direct inspiration from particular artists, or is it just that something that's you've just been attracted to that style for for a change? That's just how you're developing. Yeah, well, I always liked techno. I was, like two years ago, I was in Peru for the first time so far away in my life, and I was in the jungle. Wow. And yeah, like far, far story now, but it was crazy. And it was laying the nights in the jungle yeah. in Peru, and there were this, the sounds of the jungle, and they were like, yeah. and the night was louder than the day. And it was it's really as if in the night, everything happened. Yeah. In the daytime, almost nothing happened compared to that. And you had all these crazy sound from the wood and all the animals. And I felt it was like, you know, and this way I had this idea to basically use all these organic sounds for the music. Yeah. And I just realized that techno, more techno-esque music fits this vibe just much better than um, oh. house music. Yeah. So it's like more, well, to me, it felt at the time it still feels like this is like a more like a natural rhythm if you want to yeah although it's like harder in a way mm -hmm. but it's if you compare like the nature and the sounds of nature yeah it's like this a bit actually wow this is how i feel about it now. <laughs> any plans to go back to peru and record some sounds out there no when i'm going now um this january i'm going to thailand oh, yeah and i'm going to take all my recording material with me and i'm going to record everything that's gonna be amazing um, to i want to make actually a uh, in an EP out of this, like a five track EP Great. of the jungle. And will yeah. that be on your own label or are you planning to resell someone else? Well, I would like to put it on Henry because yeah. this is what Henry does, yeah. kind of these sounds. So, but it's not going to be ready until next summer because I'm going to collect the sounds in January. Great. I saved now for two years for this trip. Yeah. <laughs> 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 gonna record all the sounds and then I will, you know, need to work on it. You've released several mixes for labels all over the world. Um, have you got any sort of new remixes stuff that's coming out soon that we should look out for? Yeah. Well, I got a remix for Ian Late, it's a Berlin based indie artist actually, mm -hmm. an indie rock artist. Yeah. Um, and then I have a new EP coming out on Henry in January. And then I have another EP coming out next year, I don't know yet when. And I don't know, I haven't signed the contract yet. Right. There will be some EPs coming next yeah. year on Henry, one for sure in January, and then some others on other labels as well. But okay. you can always you know, be on my Facebook, my SoundCloud, my Twitter, there are all the news. Maya, thank you so much for coming in and deconstructing your track Waiting for Tony for us. We hope this has given you plenty of inspiration for your own music making. And remember, you can find out more about our courses in London, Los Angeles, and online by visiting our website, pointblankmusicschool.com. 
Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.